Let's hear what this sounds like so far. Cool. Hey everybody, Jeff Schneider here. Yesterday we did a reharmonization exercise where we took any random melody note and assigned it a chord tone so that we could basically come up with a new random chord progression and it still sounded good. Well, today we're going to do something similar but a little different. We're gonna put some constraints on the reharmonization exercise here using something I call the waterfall bass line. And all that is is a descending chromatic bass line. So it's gonna be like this in the left hand. Just a descending C chromatic scale. You can start on any note. We're just going to start on C to make it easy. Um, but this is not easy. And in fact, it's a little bit harder than what we did yesterday because of those constraints. We don't have as much choice here. We actually have uh, a defined melody note. By the way, I should mention that the melody note here is going to be C, a high C the entire time. So in fact, we can use the outer voices just to get started. So we have C in both hands. And then the right hand stays on C, the left hand goes down chromatically, the waterfall bass line. Now, we have to fill in the notes between those two outer voices. We have to come up with chords that work. And this is a voice a voicing uh, challenge where you have to come out, come up with new voicings. It's also going to force you to think about, okay, what chord tone is my high C as I change the bass line, the waterfall bass line there. So I'll write it out here so that we can kind of come up with some chords together. Uh, and we're going to try to find some good voicings and hopefully come away with some, come away with something that sounds cool. Uh, and then tomorrow we'll apply a similar technique to an actual song and you'll hear how everything we've been talking about the last couple of days comes together. So let's give this a try. All right, so I've gone ahead and laid out the entire C chromatic scale going down, starting from C all the way back down to C, and we're going to write chords over each one of these notes here, and we'll figure out some voicings that work. So there, there's more than one way to do this, first of all. For instance, when we have the Cs on the outside, uh, on the outer voices, we could do C major, C minor. Um, we could even do something like A flat over C. Something like that, where you play an A flat major triad over a C. That's fair game. As long as those outer voices are intact, we're going to be able to come up with some interesting uh, sounds. And lastly, before we get into it, you know, I said this is going to be harder in some ways than what we did yesterday, but it's actually going to potentially sound better because of the chromatic bass line. Whenever you have chromatic motion like that in any voice, that's that's really synonymous with good voice leading. So there's potential there for this to sound even better than what we did yesterday. But let's give it a try. So I'm going to start with... Um, what, what is this? This is like a C69, a C69 voicing. So let's write that out. So we have a C69. And the voicing for that is C, A, D, G, and C. It's, it's kind of like stacked fourths with a C underneath. Now the next one's kind of tricky because we have a B in the bass and a C on top. So that's a, a really dissonant interval there. We're gonna call that C a flat nine and that means we're going to play some sort of B7 chord because flat nines just work well on B7s or, or on dominant sevens rather. So let's try this one. I like this voicing a lot. This is a B7. Uh, really, it's a B13 with a flat nine because that G sharp there is a 13. Uh, some other options you could do. You could do like a C over B. Even that could work. You know, you hear this sometimes in pop music, actually, like a. Something like that. That's not too uncommon there, but I'm going to go with the B7, the B13 with the flat nine there. So let's write that out. Okay, cool. Now we have the B flat in the bass. Let's see what we have so far. I'm going to go to B flat major nine with the, uh, the 13 in there as well. So this is going to be a B flat major 13. And the voicing for that, we have a B flat. That's the one. G is the 13. D is the third, F is the five, A is the seven, and C is the nine. So C is the nine of B flat, and we're just deciding to go with a major chord. We could do B flat minor nine too, that could sound interesting, but let's do this one. All right, review. Not bad. Um, next one. All right, this is gonna be A altered, or A seven alt. That C on top of the A, is a sharp nine, in my head at least. And we're gonna do uh, something like that. That's gonna be with the root in the bottom, the flat seven, 
the third, the sharp five, and the sharp nine. So you could also think of it as A7, sharp nine, sharp five, or sharp five, sharp nine, however you want to think about it. Okay, let's go a little faster here. Uh, A flat, we're going to go with A flat major, seven, then uh, we'll go with G minor 11, and then let's do A flat over G flat. Sort of like an A-flat triad over a G-flat triad. It's a nice sound. That's a big spread in the left hand. You don't have to do that. You can play it like that if you want. Let's hear what this sounds like so far. Cool. All right. Now when we get to that F, we have a C up top, an F in the bottom. Remember, you could do F major. You could do F minor. There are no rules here. Anything goes. So uh, let's do... All right, so this is going to be F minor 13. Lots of big chords here. F minor 13. Uh, and here's just a C over E. Slash chords are all good. So here's the F minor 13 going to the C over E. Notice how spread this voicing is. Everything is, I'm just playing C, G, C, G, C with the E in the bottom there. I'm not playing the E anywhere else. This is an old school voicing trick where if you have the third in the bass, you don't double it anywhere. Uh, it's okay to double it, but sort of the traditional rule is to not double it. And that's what I'm doing here. All right, we're on to E flat now. I'm going to actually bring the E flat up the octave just to make it a little bit easier to play. So uh, let's see. We could do E flat 13, E flat major 13. I'm going to go with this E flat minor 13. And then I'm going to play, uh, this is like a B flat add 9 over D. Okay, we're almost through. Let's do D flat major 7 for the second to last chord. And then C major, good old C major. Okay, so we have a ton of chords here. Let's check it out. Lots of harmony there, but it sounds pretty good because of that descending bass line moving in chroma moving chromatically. That that natural voice leading that's sort of baked into the cake really makes a difference. And then of course on top we have a common tone. And, and in terms of voice leading, that's sort of those are the two rules of voice leading that I like to always go back to. Keep your common tones and use small intervals everywhere else. Again, what really helps with this is knowing good voicings. Uh, my Sick Chords Volume One resource is a great. Uh, resource for learning voicings. I have a bonus bundle coming out on Monday, so don't get sick chords until Monday. Hold off, guys. Uh, but once you get it, you'll find that your your playing is just going to skyrocket because knowing good voicings is really one of the biggest secrets to playing good chord progressions. Look out for the sick chords bonus bundle. If you want to get notified about when that's live and when you can get when you can get it, I'm going to send out the link to my email list. So if you click the link on the screen or in the description below, I'll put you on that list so that you get notified when the bonus bundle for Sick Chords Volume 1 goes live. There's so much good stuff in there. It's going to be a crazy deal, and I know it's going to help your playing, so I really hope you check it out. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.